All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest, the land of Platinum Coffee in PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and we're going to get into our, well, I would say our little Halloween special here. Matter of fact, this one is dedicated, dedicated to my kids, especially out there to Ellie and Eamon, who love the Pumpkin Smasher story. Uh, this one actually came to me, and I really enjoyed it, and I figured this kind of fit into the season, and so... Here we go. Just one second, though. Need to say this real quick. I want to thank you guys so very much for uh, trying to kind of jump in there with the uh, PacWest Bigfoot clan. I'm going to go ahead and keep it off uh, for right now. and uh, But I will be bringing you the encounter stories, of course, every other week and as I can. So you can find them here on YouTube. And if you can, please sit through the commercials as the commercials actually help to cover the kind of cost for the software and pay for some of the time to be here so I greatly appreciate that and let's get into this right now the pumpkin smasher Bigfoot of Roosh Bigfoot it is what I saw right outside my window at night on three different occasions and what was stealing stuff from our small farm back in the early 80s outside of Roosh Oregon I was just a kid when all this happened but I was old enough Ten years old, in fact, when I saw this thing, and my father as well. Here's my encounter, Dave, and what I saw that final morning on our farm out near Roosh in the Applegate Valley. <clears throat> the Pumpkin Smasher. It was a year ago that we became friends on Facebook, Dave, and I found you through the PacWest Bigfoot channel. <clears throat> Your stories are great. Scary, some of them, but great. <laughs> anyway... I saw you once post up a picture of the Pumpkin Smasher children's book you read to your kids uh, around fall. Well, I was read that by my mother as a kid too, but I also had it really happen to me. Well, me and my family on our small farm outside of Rouge. I know it sounds like a story from a children's book itself, but it did. We had a Bigfoot on the property, and one with a particular interest in our pumpkins and other vegetables, as you will learn. So. What happened? Well, it started one August, actually. Something's on the property. My dad, he was something else, my mother would say. While everyone else wanted to start the next singing group from Motown, he wanted to move out of it and into the country. Seriously, he was the only African-American in Detroit back then that wanted to move to the Pacific Northwest and run a small farm. And yes, I know, even back then, my mom said he was the laughing stock of the family and neighborhood for having that dream. But he had the last laugh. He, back in the late 90s, he sold that property for nearly a million dollars. Ha! My mom was not surprised, however. He was a real working class man with a solid work ethic to boot. He was, and still is, my role model today. He was also very protective of this little piece of God's green earth, for sure. And even when that Bigfoot came around, stealing stuff and wreaking havoc, well, my dad's anger rivaled the craziness of that monster itself. It started about six or seven years after, this thing, these, uh, after things were up and running on the small farm. My dad was growing several different crops by that time and had some great business going on with local markets until the corporations and politicians moved in, of course. He purchased some property just outside of Roosh. Oregon's, uh, Oregon, uh, Roosh, Oregon, away, is about 20 acres worth. He uh, even built the house that stood on it the day we sold it all. But until that point, that August, things were great. It was late August, and we were already in the midst of harvesting much of what we grew there. And most of the uh, most of it was, was was things like carrots, corn, squash, and all kinds of cucumber. And yes, pumpkins, squash, <laughs> were a big hit for us. Most of the pumpkins could be sold at the local grocery stores back then. That is how it was: locally grown, locally bought. Not like today, unless it is a farmer's market. Well, most stuff is shipped into these large gro grocery chains from, well, everywhere else but nearby for the most part. But it was, but it started out kind of crazy, though, and it started with me. I remember it all so vividly today, and it still sends shivers up my spine, too. But it came to my window at night, several times. Three times, I remember for sure. The Monkey Man. 
I recall that first night. It was almost my birthday, about a week before, and I was, I was born on September 1st, so I was nine when it started. About ten, uh, but ten years old. The other two times I, I saw this thing, this this monkey-like thing, in in my window. We were living in a large double-wide trailer parked on the property back then. My dad was, when he had time, working on building the house when all this occurred. Uh, it was about, uh, I was about to turn 10 years old. My birthday was right around the corner, and although I had a few friends living out that far in the country, there was a couple that lived just over past the farm itself. My friend River lived literally down by the Applegate River, not far from our farm. I could walk to his house in just a few minutes. But other than that, we were in a small valley surrounded by the foothills of the Cascades where the thick pine and oak-laden forests met the edges of our property, and that is where I think this thing at my window lived. It was River who told me what I was seeing at the time and warned me about them, about the Bigfoot that roamed the area. It was funny, though, he'd never said anything before, but I, I think he was afraid to at the time. It was not until it was really bothering me that he injected a little bit more about them into our conversations. Well, what he knew about them. But let me take you there first, to that first visual at the window that I remember. I was pretty excited to be turning 10 years old in just about a week or a week and a half from that night. It was really hard to sleep and that first night as well because at dinner earlier my mom and dad asked to share with them the thoughts about cake and a present or two and while all thing all all the other lights were off that evening i turned mine back on when i when my parents went off to sleep to write down what i wanted and the chocolate cake i wanted in the shape of he-man eventually however i i turned off my light i did and as i started walking back to my bed i noticed a a shadow of sorts move across the room. I immediately looked over through the window, only to see it was almost all but blacked out. Something was standing there, but it was so dark I could not make out exact what it was exactly. But whatever it was, it blocked out all the ambient light from behind it for a few seconds. Then, before I could move another inch or yell out for my mom and dad, whatever it was moved off, literally. There was blackness, and there was moonlight pouring through the window. To be honest, I was not too scared. I, I thought maybe it was a bear on its hind legs and standing there and took off, but reflecting on it the next day, well, I swear that thing turned and walked off. Literally, it walked off. I did not yell for my parents. I went to bed instead. <clears throat> but I did tell them there was an animal at my window, and as I did, they believed it was simply a black bear as well, just being curious. That same thing happened again, not a day after my birthday. Once again, I was up a little late, and once again, I was turning off the light when I noticed it was unusually dark in my room. I looked over at the window to see something dark turn and walk off again. This time, however, I saw shoulders, at least what I swear were shoulders. This was a trailer, mind you. It was one that was jacked up a bit off the ground. So... For the shoulders to be up that high in the window, well, that thing, or bear, it had to be really tall. Again, I told my parents, but they, they thought it was still just a bear. Monster face. It was the end of September when I saw the face, and that is when my friend River told me about some stories he'd heard, overheard his mom and dad mention about these things, the stuff he did not tell me before. I was up again late one night. It was like it was like a Halloween mask at first. I, I really thought my dad was trying to scare the tar out of me. But after a good look, I was staring at what looked like a, a deformed face of a monster of some kind. Today I hear people s describe it as a deformed and long monkey man-like face. And, and it's pretty spot on, to be honest. It was so scary, I, I felt like running, and I did. But at first, for about a couple seconds or so, I was staring into the eyes of a monster. Not a Halloween mask, but a real live monster. I ran out of my room, ducking as I ran near the window, and out the door, screaming for my mom and dad. Mom, Dad! 
I freaked them out waking them up, especially my mother, I remember. There was no evidence of anything that big, as big as I explained to Lee, standing outside that window, either that night or in the morning when my dad took a second look around the trailer. <clears throat> but there was a problem. Smashed pumpkins. And there were some weird foot impressions all around that particular area. And some of the other squash and crop, well, they were literally pulled up out of the ground and gone too. It was that monster. It was Bigfoot. But nobody believed me. Not at first, at least. My dad, I could tell, was left scratching his head over the incident. At dinner, I listened as he told my mom that he thought it was a person because of the shape of the foot impressions, however massive in size, they were the shape of a human being. It was the impressions of a heel that had him second-guessing himself. Well, fall started, pumpkins were being harvested, so was everything else, corn and all. And two more times, we'd find ourselves the victims of theft from the crops. Corn trampled, pumpkins smashed, they looked half-eaten too, other plants pulled up and missing. By that point, my dad was rather upset, so much so, he called out a friend of his, River's dad, who was part of the local law enforcement. Another reason he, River, could not tell me so much. He was not allowed to talk about it. Well, not that he was not allowed to talk about Bigfoot, he was simply not allowed to talk about his dad's work-related stuff he'd overheard from time to time. It was just a rule in the house. One of them was this, the raiding and stealing from our farm. See, ours was not the only farm with this problem. And now, during lunch, a few weeks later into the new school year, he opened up a bit about it. There were a couple other farms that were having the same issues. He said that both were just to the west of us, not too far at all. As a matter of fact, one of the farms was not a mile from ours. It was more of a ranch, actually. They raised sheep there, and two or three had been killed and taken in late August and through September. He said his father believed it was a, a person or a couple of people, as there were two different sized foot impressions located at the properties. Now there was a third property in the mix, ours. It was eating a pumpkin. October and things continued on. More stolen vegetables, more impressions on the ground. However, this time, my mother swore she saw someone, at least a shadow or shape of a pretty tall person, run across the backyard area. <clears throat> it was not every single night, just here and there, when things would be trampled, smashed, and stolen. Of course, my dad was trying to stay pretty vigilant about protecting the crop, and us too. He would stay up later here and there. He added some light out there, but... That really did not work so well. But that is what helped my mom to see what she saw. It was pretty late that night, and my dad was up for a while. <clears throat> Eventually, however, he came inside, pooped out with a long day of harvesting and getting things ready for winter as well. He was lights out in just a minute after hitting the couch to just rest for a second, he said. <clears throat> my mom covered him up, left the radio playing lightly, and started to head off herself to bed. That was the moment she saw something. She shut the lights off in the living room and went over to shut the curtains she'd forgot earlier. She noticed just beyond where the light reached some movement, like a shadow or a silhouette of a person running off. She did not want to, but she woke my dad, who ran out on the porch, to look. Nothing, no more movement of any kind was observed. The next day, again, there were some vegetables missing and a couple of pumpkins were smashed to pieces. This time, my dad was a bit furious. So much so, he decided to start waking up earlier and going to bed later, even later, and doing some walkthroughs. And yes, he would be armed. <clears throat> it was literally a week before Halloween and we were taking the last loads of pumpkins to the local market and would have our Saturday farmer's market booth up with some produce and such to sell. There were no more faces in the window. That seemed to have stopped after the last time I had told you about it. But there was the raiding of the farm on and off. It was rather sporadic at best. But that morning, 
was an early Saturday and I was going to help my dad get things ready. It was barely light outside. I remember when he woke me and I started getting myself together for the day. I headed downstairs to get some breakfast real quick, looking out at the foggy morning, and heard him from the front yard yelling at me to get out there and hand me his gun he'd left by the door. Get out here! I stepped out and there it was, real as life at that moment. It was a Bigfoot. This thing was not as massive as some reports and stories I've heard or read, but <clears throat> it was a head taller than my dad, and he was almost six foot at the time. It was still somewhat dark and really foggy outside, like I said, but there was enough light for both of us to see what we were seeing, and in some detail. It was not a person. It was like some large ape-like creature just standing there near the edge of the pumpkin patch, swaying back and forth and back and forth and looking right at us. We could see that it was breathing really heavy as its chest moved in and out with every breath and its shoulders would rise and fall. It was also very, very hairy and pitch black in color. Its breath could be seen in the cold morning air. We felt like it was really ticked off that we'd stepped outside, that we'd seen it as it began to growl. It was a pretty scary moment. So much so, my dad had the gun in one hand and the other outstretched to keep me behind him. Suddenly, without warning, it started screaming. We could, you could feel it, like a lion or something. It just vibrated everywhere. Then, it ran off towards the woods. And it was not alone. We could see from near the, the rows of corn that something else was running on two legs towards the woods as well. We could not see much of it other than what shape it was or where it was headed. My dad let off three rounds into the air sporadically himself as he walked over to the edge of the forest. He was letting them know it was done, that he was over them raiding the farm and peeking in our windows. My mom came running out yelling, but after seeing me and dad alive and fine, she calmed down a bit and started asking what happened and we told her over breakfast. Old farms, old Bigfoot. Life got back to normal, and I and River had a great story to tell, but we were not allowed to tell it at all at the time. But we did share it with each other, however. Today, my mom and dad are still living in southern Oregon. As for myself, well, I work in the tech industry up and around Beaverton, not on a farm. But yes, once in a while, I take my family out into the woods of this awesome state. And along the way... When passing by farms on the outskirts of town, towns, I tell my story to my kids, even though they get tired of it. But that is my encounter story, Dave. Thanks. Reginald.